But did you know your voice was a big deal? Did you know your voice was different than everybody else's? Did you know that your voice no. was like legendary, that there has been no one since and will be no one who sounds like you? No. You know, they get singers that come out now and they sort of sound like, you know, maybe he sounds a little bit like Luther. Mm -hmm. That's what they said about Freddie Jackson. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they sound somewhat like uh, uh, Aretha, or maybe the Jennifer, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. But there's nobody no. who sounds like you, baby. I've been compared maybe a bit to Sly Stone, but that's just the style of That's funny, that's delivery. the T-shirt I got on today. Yep, your Sly T-shirt, mm -hmm. Joe, dude. And, uh, but I've been more compared to an instrument than a person, mm -hmm. like a saxophone, you know, it's been, it, and I consider myself a horn. My voice is like a horn for me. How did the the, the marriage hold up through all this it did star it. rising? Mm -hmm. Marriage isn't. It's so now married. you're a single mom. Yes, I always have been, even when I was married. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> mm -hmm. How did, how was that? You know, I know. It I, was, you know, it, you know, it's a t it's tough. The toughest part was not so much leaving my husband, it was leaving the kids. Cause they want, when I had a baby, I had some Malini running around, you know. I was gonna ask you, did she, was she raised like in the studio and- No, what, no, no. She, I tried to give her as much of a normal upbringing as I could, but that's impossible. It is. <laughs> it still was still impossible. I tried it too. Yeah, Epic it don't, fail. it didn't work. Epic so, <laughs> but she when she tried to climb in my suitcases when I was had to go on the road, mm -hmm. that broke my heart. Mm -hmm. That absolutely broke my heart. So, um, I mean, even from the I, when I first had her, I breastfed her for a year. So I had her on the road Good with Lord. me. I had her on the bus. We were on tour buses. So I had her little bassinet on the tour bus. I laid on top of the motor in the back, and she'd sleep forever. You know, that good chocolate milk, <laughs> and then put her down to on top of the motor. But, well, uh, as you talk about these tour buses, it raises the image in my mind of, you know, the Motown tour and what they've had to endure traveling and similar, on the buses. Did you have to go through, did you guys face much racism then uh, traveling? Yes, we around? did. Yes, yeah. Because we had to stop at truck stops to eat, you know, when we were playing in the southern states and even the midwestern states. Truck stops got good whole, food, though. Yeah, good damn good food <laughs> yeah. still today. Right, but all over the, the the you know the United States, you know the you know there was there's always been that undermine underlying you know racism you know amongst the the working class, and we were like uh, having to try to eat, and you know so but there, it's, we always had like a couple of white guys in the band. We would take orders if we saw it was oh. extra rough. <laughs> it yeah, we didn't you know, and there was a time. Uh, when uh, a guy hired us, and when we got there, the band had changed. There weren't as many white guys in the band. Uh, Tony and Bobby had joined, so that yeah, because there was a lot of uh, transition. Yes, in Rufus, yes, correct? there were. Yeah, yes, there was. Huh. Uh, but there was always the core: Tony, Tony Maiden, Bobby Watson, and myself, and Kevin Murphy, who is who is uh, from Minnesota. And he's one white guy that stuck in there 